I've walked by this statue at the courthouse in downtown Toronto dozens of times. It's called the Pillars of Justice, and it represents the part of the legal system in which the public most participates, the jury. What makes it so special is there's one empty space for you to imagine yourself as the 12th juror. But juries don't often witness everything that happens during a court case. And in this case, against Della Millard and Mark Smitch, there was a lot that was kept from the jury. Courtrooms are pretty basic places. Tables and chairs for the lawyers and defendants, usually benches for the gallery, but generally pretty simple. So jurors in courtroom 27 may have been curious about the heavy curtains around the co-accused tables. That was to hide the belts binding their feet. Steel shackles would have been too loud. Every morning, the two men were brought in before the jury arrived, handcuffed too, but those were taken off. And why was this hidden from the jury? To avoid having to mention that Millard and Smitch are already convicted killers in one of the most gruesome cases in southern Ontario, a crime that was never mentioned in front of the jury. Tim Bosma was just 32. He had a wife and baby girl at home. They needed some extra cash, so they posted Bosma's truck for sale on Kijiji. In May 2013, two men, Millard and Smitch, showed up at his home for a test drive. Bosma was killed within minutes, shot dead inside his own truck. His body then burned in an animal incinerator. After a five-month trial, Millard and Smitch were handed life sentences, no chance of parole for 25 years. For Tim's murderers, their life sentence begins now, and ours began over three years ago when they murdered Tim. The ban on all things Bosma even extended to Bosma's parents, who wanted to be there to support Laura Babcock's family, but Justice Michael Code advised them to stay away. The greatest kind of support they can give the Babcock family is to make sure we get through this trial, he said, during a closed-door legal discussion the jury never heard. I strongly suspect the Babcock family feels the same way. The jury at the Babcock trial got to witness something incredibly rare. One of the accused represented himself. Della Millard acted as his own lawyer, and as such, Justice Code cut him a little slack the jury never knew about. Millard complained that being in prison was affecting his ability to act as his own lawyer because he wasn't getting enough time to shower and shave. Justice Code considered his complaint. I'm not sure how long it takes you to shower and shave, but it takes me about five minutes, he said. Code made special arrangements to make sure Millard got enough time to groom. Well, Millard waits to learn whether the jury here finds him guilty of Babcock's murder. He's staring down another court date the jury didn't hear about. First degree murder in the death of his father. Four months after Babcock disappeared, her final phone call traced to Millard's home. His father was found dead in his bed at the very same home. He died of a gunshot wound to the eye. His death was initially ruled a suicide. So once again, Millard will face a judge and jury this March where the pillars of justice will perform their duty and you might just find yourself the 12th juror. Shannon Martin, CBC News, Toronto.